Hello and a good morning to everyone. Welcome to the daily newspaper analysis of the Shankar Ayes Academy brought to you by the Civil Media team for today's date 30th August 2024. Displayed here are the list of important articles that we would be discussing today from these newspapers along with prelims practice question with each article. Before getting into the video discussion, there are just few announcements to be made. The pre-storming UPSC prelim test series are starting from the 6th of September 2024 of batch 1st. And also to boost your UPSC mains preparation with us, All India UPSC mains open mock test 2024 are been conducted so all the interested aspirants can join the test series so now without any much further delay let's get into the articles discussion one by one moving to the first news you can change friends but not neighbors a very famous quote by atal bihari vajpayee quote is still relevant when it comes to regional and cooperation and for country like india considering its neighbors it is important to see the geopolitical strategies in the light of this code and from the code let us see the news pakistan invites narendra modi to attend the seo meeting that is the shanghai cooperation organization meeting in islamabad of pakistan for october 15 to 16 pakistan holds the rotating chairmanship of the seo council of heads of government meeting and it will be hosting a two day in person meeting so from the mains perspective shanghai cooperation organization is important for paper 2 gs and for prelims factual information like the number of countries the year of countries joining is very important so in the light of prelims perspective let us see first what is seo shanghai cooperation organization or seo was formerly known as shanghai five mechanism which was formed in 1996 which comprises five countries russia China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan and only in 2021 it was formed as Shanghai Cooperation Organization with Uzbekistan's entry. The Shanghai 5 mechanism was earlierly formed for border issues between China and former Soviet Republic and now the SEO is formed for larger purpose that is it serves as a key Eurasian alliance focused on political, economic and security alliance for the regional cooperation and stability among the countries now let us see the key bodies of the cooperation first is the heads of state council it is the highest decision making body which organizes their meeting annually it is important for making critical decisions and important guidelines next is the seo secretariat it is based in beijing and it handles day to day administrative functions of the organization the next body is the regional anti terrorist structure or the rats it is based in tashkent that is uzbekistan uh, regional anti terrorist structure or the rats is the permanent organ of the shanghai cooperation organization and and another key body is the heads of governmental council and its purpose is to consider and decide issues when it comes to economic interaction within the organization now let us move to the membership and structure let us see who are all the full and permanent members that is india china russia pakistan kazakhstan kyrgyzstan tajikistan uzbekistan iran and belarus so in 2017 india became a permanent member in the seo organization and iran was joined in 2000 2023 in the virtual meetup which was hosted by india for the first time and recently in 2024 in july belarus was joined as the 10th member of the organization so totally the members are 10 countries in seo let us see the observer states it includes countries like afghanistan and mongolia and other observe seo activities often participating in discussions but without voting rights and when it comes to dialogue partners 14 countries like the sri lanka turkey nepal engage with seo as dialogue partners cooperating on various issues without full membership now let us see india's role in the seo as i told before india became a full member in the year 2017 now let us look at the strategic goals to enhance its influence in the eurasian geopolitics and strengthening ties with regional powers these are few goals 
which was focused by the SEO when it comes to India. First is the security cooperation. India uses SEO platform to collaborate on counter-terrorism efforts, particularly in addressing threat from terrorism and extremism in the region. Next is to economic and energy access. The SEO provides India with access to the resource-rich Central Asian region, which is crucial for energy security and enhancing trade routes like International North-South Transport Corridor or INSTC. Next is having a geopolitical balance. India's involvement in the SEO helps balance China's influence in the region and strengthens India's strategic autonomy by engaging with countries like Russia, China and other Asian powers. Now let us see the key highlights of the SEO summits which would be conducted annually. The last SEO summit was conducted in the Astana from Kazakhstan. Now let us see the highlights. First is the expansion of the members. Belarus was admitted as the 10th full member reflecting growing influence and reach of SEO. Next is the Astana declaration. This key document outlined agreements on energy cooperation, security and economic cooperation among member states. Next is the SEO development strategy 2035. The summit introduced a long term strategy focused on enhancing regional security, energy cooperation and fostering ecotourism among member states and finally India's role or India's focus. India emphasized counter-terrorism and economic initiatives like the Make in India aiming to strengthen its regional influence, promote economic interest and foster indigenous culture. And this is about the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now let us move on to a practice question. Which of the following countries were not among the original members of the Shanghai Five, which later evolved in the SEO? China, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. The answer is Uzbekistan. As I told, it was joined in 2021 and Shanghai Five comprises only that five countries, which is again I am telling Russia, China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. So, such questions would be confusing when it comes to prelims as these are the main areas where the questions can be twisted and aspirants can be confused. So, now let us move on to the next article. Now, let us move into the second news. Artificial rain work from home among measures suggested for Delhi's winter action plan. So, Delhi known as the hub for UPSC is unfortunately known for its pollution status also. So, this article can be covered from GS paper 3 mains perspective and at the same time when it comes to prelims perspective, topics like artificial rain, Delhi's pollution status and reasons on pollution status of Delhi is very important. So, from prelims perspective, first let us see what artificial rain is. Before knowing what is artificial rain, we should know what is geoengineering? Geoengineering is a term which refers as proposed techniques to combat climate change. So, under geoengineering, there are two types of methods through which uh, climate change can be combated. First is the CDR that is uh, carbon dioxide removal. The carbon dioxide is removed by various methods like bioengineering which includes growing of GMO that is genetically modified organisms or crops to foster afforestation and so on to reduce carbon dioxide from the surroundings or to promote carbon sequestration and it also includes method like direct air capture where it involves machines to suck the pollutant air and let out purified air. Now this is the first type under second type known as SRM that is solar radiation management. Under this methods to combat global warming is carried by managing incoming solar radiation. When there are high amount of sun rays, to tackle this, particles like aerosol is being injected in the stratospheric uh, surrounding. So, because of those aerosols, artificial rain can be formed. So, in this light of the concept, let us move to see now what is artificial rain is all about. Artificial rain or cloud seeding is a method used to enhance precipitation by dispersing substances into the air to encourage formation of rain or snow. Commonly materials like the silver iodine which is a salt and potassium iodide and dry ice it serves as a nuclei for water droplet formation. 
the particles attract moisture from the especially cumulus clouds where it has almost 40 percent of the moisture content for rain formation so the particles attract moisture they lead to the growth of larger droplets and stimulate precipitation in higher amount for example a study published by the bulletin of the american meteorological society that is bams revealed that the cloud seeding trail in maharashtra's solapur region led to almost 18 percent of increase in rainfall compared to usual patterns nations like the uae russia china all use china in 2008 use cloud uh, seeding comparing china and that is beijing and delhi is almost a very important uh, comparative studies when it comes to pollutants now let us see the objectives of an artificial rain first is the air pollution reduction artificial rain can help to wash away pollutants from the atmosphere as the particles are being sucked in the aerosols or the silver iodide especially particularly in heavily polluted areas like delhi this is particularly effective in reducing particulate matter of 2.5 and particulate matter of 10 both pm 2.5 and pm 10 are very dangerous these are pollutants which can cause bronchitis asthma smog creation and ultimately lead to acid rain. PM10 pollutants can actually settle on the surface so that the pollutants won't be moving and would be circulating in one area leading to consequences which impact human as well as the surroundings. Next is the drought mitigation. It includes supporting agriculture and also to increase precipitation in areas suffering from drought. This can help in replenishing water reservoirs, groundwater and agricultural land. And finally, to reduce wildfire. In areas prone to wildfire, such as forest and grasslands, cloud seeding can be used to increase rainfall and reduce the risk of fires starting or spreading. Now, after knowing what is uh, artificial rain, now let us look at the reasons for such a high pollution in Delhi. Delhi having 20 million people are almost affected by the pollutant and almost it includes 10 million vehiculars which brings in pollution. Now, let us see the reasons. First is the landlocked area. Delhi is situated in Indo-Gangetic Plain which is a landlocked area surrounded by the Himalayas to the north. This traps the air and prevents pollutants from dispersing. Thus the Himalayas are here and when the Delhi is there and when any air comes in there is no way of the pollutants or the air to be escaping anywhere. Next is the low wind speed. During winter the region experiences low wind speeds which further hinders the dispersal of pollutants causing them to accumulate. Next is the temperate inversion. What is temperate inversion? it is nothing in normally air temperature decreases with altitude but during inversion layer of warm air sits above cooler air near the ground creating a lid or a dome that traps pollutants so placing the himalayas here and when delhi is here the cold mountain air would be coming from the region of punjab and haryana and at the same time there would be a lowland air would be passing through the cold mountain air. Thus, a layer of cold mountain air and a layer of low land air is being present and there is no way of escaping of the pollutants in the region Delhi. And next is the high population density. As I told you before, with a population of over 20 million, Delhi has an enormous number of vehicles contributing to high levels of nitrogen, oxides and particulate matter which increase the pollution status. Also, increasing the number of construction will lead to urban heat island effect. And finally is the stumble burning. Neighboring states like the Punjab and Haryana burn residues crops which leads to massive spike in air pollution in Delhi due to prevailing wind patterns carrying the smoke in the city. Thus, these are the important reasons on the high pollution of Delhi. Now, let us see few initiatives by the government 
to tackle air pollution. First is the Samir app. Through this app, air quality information is available to the public along with provisions for registering complaints against air pollution activities. So, this app is released by the Air Quality Index which is established by the Central Pollution Control Board. According to the report given by the Air Quality Index, India is among the second country which is highly populated and Delhi is among the world's first capital city to be very polluted for over the past four years. Now next is the Eco Club. Under the National Green Corps NGC program, the uh, Ministry of Environmental, Forest and Climate Change identified 1 lakh schools as Eco Clubs and 30 lakh students are actively participating in various environmental protection and conservational activities. The Ministry is promoting people's participation and building awareness among citizens for environmental conservation. Therefore, to promote cycling, saving water and electricity city, uh, having afforestation programs, maintenance of vehicles and so on, so that there is reduction of pollution through following lane discipline and reducing congestion on roads by carpooling etc. So, the news is being covered from prelims perspective and let us see a practice question on this topic. Consider the following, winter, population density, distance from sea and agriculture. How many of the above is or are factors responsible for pollution in Delhi? And the answer is all of the above as it is during the month of October to November, the pollution is always high or in spikes in Delhi as the cropping pattern of the Punjab and Haryana states will be is affecting. And next is the population density that is almost 20 million population and distance from the sea as it is a landlocked city and next is the agricultural reason. So, let us move on to the last article. Now, let us see the last news for today. Why the union government banned 156 irrational fixed dose combinations? The article discusses the recent decision by the Union Health Ministry of India to ban 156 irrational fixed dose combinations that is the FDC medicines. Now, first let us see what is FDC. Fixed dose combination FDC medicine is a pharmaceutical product which contains two or more active ingredients combined in a single dosage form such as pill, capsule, tablet or injection. FTCs are designed to simplify treatment ways, improve patient adherence to medications and enhance therapeutic efficiency by combining the drugs that have complementary or synergistic effects. In later slides, we will see what is synergistic effects. Now, let us see what FTC comprises of. As per the rule 122E Drugs and Cosmetic Act of 1940, the FTCs are considered as new drugs. It is approved by CDSCO that is Central Drug Standard Control Organization after due examination of data on rationality, safety and confirm the quality standards of the FDCs. The example of FTC can be a tripla. It is a combination of Efavirin and Tenofovir and so on. It is nothing but it has medications that is two or more which treat HIV and virus that causes AIDS. So, thus this FDC as it combines three or more drugs, this medicine is called as all in one pill, all in one pill. Instead of three separate pills, it is considered as one pill which uses the method called fixed dose combination. Now, let us see the benefits of fixed dose combination drugs. First is the simplified medication regimen. FDCs reduce the number of pills a patient needs to take which simplifies treatment. It is useful for people taking multiple pills. Next is the synergistic effect. It is nothing but synergy that is when there is two or more things work. Combined effect of the drugs is greater than the sum of their individual effects. This can lead to better treatment outcomes such as improved blood pressure or control or more effective management of the infections. Next is to reduce the cost. FDCs can reduce overall healthcare cost by lowering the number of prescriptions and doctor visits. Next is the better management of chronic conditions. Patients with chronic diseases that require long-term medication such as the hypertension, diabetes or HIV and so on, FDCs can reduce the 
pill burden making it easier for patients to manage their condition over the long time and can reduce the time efficiently and finally is combating monotherapy and finally combating monotherapy resistant monotherapy is nothing but the usage of just one drug using one drug can make any infection or a disease to be resistant as the disease might learn to fight back whenever a body gets infected thus instead of one drug having two or more can confuse the infection and even if one medicine or one material is not working the other materials can combat the infection in a body thus it can lead to resistance such as malaria where fdcs provide a combination that reduce the livelihood of resistance developing now after seeing the benefits we should equally see the problems associated with the fdcs first is the irrational combination sometimes in a body a drug can get ineffective as one drug is not isn't needed for the body's immunity or it can work opposite or it can enhance its toxicity by being toxic to the body condition this can lead to organ damage and cardiovascular issues next is the inappropriate dosage or lack of flexibility fdcs have fixed proportions of active ingredients which may not be suitable for all patients for example a patient might require higher dose of one drug and a lower dose of another drug but ftc doesn't allow for such adjustments next is the antibiotic resistance ftcs that can include antibiotics are particularly concerning inappropriate use of antibiotic combinations can promote the development of antibiotic resistant bacteria making infections harder to treat in the future for example the common medicine like augmentin which is used for a uh, cold or like throat purposes has the antibiotic resistance next is the licensing after the approval of cdsco the state issues a license to manufacture and market without asking for no objection from cdsco thus this questions the ethicality of any medicines out there now we have seen about the fdcs from a prelims perspective and let us see question according to this article this is a very simple question to answer with reference to fixed dose combination drugs consider the following statement fdcs are used to improve therapeutic outcomes by combining drugs with complementary mechanisms of action the introduction of the new fdcs in the market does not require any approval process in india overuse of fdcs can lead to issues like drug resistance especially in antibiotics which of the statements given above is or are correct option a 1 and 3 option b 2 and 3 option c 1 and 2 and option d 1 2 and 3 and the answer is option a 1 and 3 of course when there is introduction of new fdcs in the market it does require approval before re- uh, approval there is a review process where the medicines are been scrutinized to the most efficient way in india thank you for watching this video don't forget to give a like comment and a share and to further not to miss any other content subscribe to our channel thank you and have a nice day